Today we're going to be talking about the planer, what it can be used for, how it's used safely. Um, and in the shop we have a 24 inch planer. It's got a spiral cut head. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. I'll show you the different parts of it, how to use it, and what we would use it for. Alright, so this is the underside, it's a little hard to see, of the planer. Originally, right in the front, you can see it has these little teeth things. These prevent the wood from going back the wrong direction. Everything should be going through this direction. So this prevents it from getting kicked back and shooting out the wrong direction. This right here is a wheel that also grips the wood and pushes it through. So it has the little teeth on the wheel that pushes it through. You can see these are the cutting heads that actually make the cuts. And then there's a guide rail just on, kind of on the back side. There's also two little guide rails down here at the bottom that the piece material will slide over. And so again, our main goal is to change the thickness of the wood. Here's a better look at the spiral cutting head. Um, it's a helical pattern, so it has these little square teeth um, that cuts through. So now you'll see that every once in a while you have to rotate these to get them sharp and to cut well. Or if they chip or anything like that, you just rotate them. But this spins and that's what's going to take off all the chips of wood. Other important things to know is where the on and off switch is. This, the on switch broke off, but you push the little button in there and then it'll turn on. It has a push lock stop so it will not work until you release the lock for the next time you want to use it um, we have a wheel here to change the thickness and move it up and down and one of the most important things that you want to have connected to it is dust collection it is one of the most messy machines if you do not have dust collection so if you have dust collection then it collects all those wood chips and they don't get all over the floor So now I'm going to show you the, what I like to do to get it prepared to plant my piece of wood. So you can see I have my walnut here. Um, you can see there's some water stains on it. Um, it's just a rough cut. It's not very smooth. Um, and we're going to convert it and make it S2S or square on two sides. So we're going to plant the top and the bottom of it and get that wood you know, S2S. Now what I like to do um, is I'll put the piece in just to where it gets past this little black clip and then I'll tighten it down where can't pull it out and then just back it up just a little bit so I know now my piece will fit through here so it's going to be um, low enough that I can start my piece and then once I get from here this part right here see how it's on the bottom every time you do the planer it's going to be one rotation to get to this so after I plant it the first time it's just one rotation and that's going to cut 1 16th of an inch off each time so one rotation is 1 16th of an inch so I'm just going to do that over and over, so we'll get this going. So as you can see here, I'm just running it through the planer, um, and you can see that after the first pass, it gets a majority of the material, but not all of it. So here's I'm pointing out some of the rough spots that are still there, but that not there in the corners. So those pieces were just a little bit thinner than the rest of the board. So again, I rotate it one rotation, so I'm only cutting one sixteenth of an inch, and then I'm passing it through. You can see that that pretty much clears it up, and that whole side is pretty much smooth. So now I'm going to do the other side. So here's another large piece of walnut I got from a local uh, sawmill, and you can see that as I cut through it, it was really dark and rough, and then once it's cut, it's just a really nice brown color. This is mesquite, um, so it kind of gives it like a walnut type color, but it's a local um, tree here, and it cuts up and it cleans up pretty nicely. Another machine is similar to the planer because it just 
same kind of functions to change the thickness of a piece of wood is the drum sanders. This one we have a supermax 25 times two, meaning that there's two sanding drums inside this, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, the reason we use this is if we don't want to take off as much material and we're trying to smooth the top of it. Um, so there's sandpaper in here that spins and then you have a conveyor belt that pushes the wood through and it'll just take off a thin layer. Um, that way you're not taking a lot of wood off of the material like the planer, uh, but you're just heating the top to smooth. So it's really good when you're gluing up like cutting boards, when some of the glue squeezes out or some of the pieces are uneven, put it through here and it will clean up nice and smooth for you. And then you can finish sanding and be done with the project. So there's four main parts of the drum sander that are important that you can control. Um, and first off is you want to have your on and off switch right here. That's just going to get the drums spinning to sand it. You have a conveyor belt, which if you turn on, you can see it pushes the wood through. So you want to try to keep this as clean as possible so it can have grip to push through. And then you have this arm here that you twist to rotate it and move it up or down depending on the thickness of your wood. Um, another thing that's really important is having dust collection. If you don't have dust collection, it'll make a, just a cloud of dust all around this machine. So you definitely want to have dust collection because all these fine particles that you get when you're sanding should be into the vacuum. So if you look at the inside of it, you can see that there's two very large cylinders that have sandpaper on them. So this one, um, there's a little, you can see there's some kind of gunk on it, so I could probably replace these, um, definitely this back one, and it has it. So there's some settings that you can adjust, um, depending on what type of sandpaper you have on it. So uh, all the settings are right here, and what type of grit that you have. So like right now, I believe I have 80 grit in the front and 120 on here. So it gets it really pretty nice and smooth, so then all, if I'm doing a project, all I have to do is the 220, 320, and so on for that. So here's a cutting board that's been glued up and then you can see from the side that not all of them are even like this one's a little bit higher and there's some glue that's sticking through. Now we don't want to run this through the planer because we're going to take off too much of the wood. We want to keep it as thick as possible for what we have left. So we're going to run through the drum sander and just try to get it until this top part is perfectly smooth. So here I am standing down on a different cutting board. Um, so you can see that as it goes through, the conveyor just kind of pushes it through. This is just doing a light sanding on it. Um, you'll see that there might be a little black mark towards the top. That's just that kind of gunk that I talked about that needs to be cleaned off the sandpaper or replaced with sandpaper. Um, but you should notice I only turned the handle one quarter of a turn. It is very important that you only turn it one quarter of a turn. Um, otherwise, it's going to overload the machine and you're trying to sand off too much. So with it, one quarter of a turn, it cuts about one thirty second of an inch off. So it's just a really small portion, and that's what you want. All you're trying to do is get it to stand smooth. So just remember a quarter of a turn each time, and then you'll be able to push it through, and it gets through. So this one stuck a little bit, so I just kind of pushed it down against the conveyor belt, and that's what helped it push it through the other side. So with this machine, you also have to have the pieces at least seven inches long. So here's the other cutting board. Once I sand it through, and you can see the top, it's pretty much perfectly smooth now, and it's good to go. Alright, here are a few very important rules that you need to know with working with the drum sander and the planer. First off, that you have to have a long enough piece that can make it through both of them without getting caught in the machine. So I would say for the drum sander, seven inches or more. I usually prefer 12 or longer. And then if you're working with the planer, you want to have it about at least 18 inches or longer. One thing that you never put through a drum sander or a planer is plywood. A plywood just has a nice smooth veneer on it. So if you run it through the drum sander or the planer, it takes off that veneer and then, then it's not going to look nice at all. It's not even going to be smooth. It's going to tear apart where the glue with the veneer is stuck on there. Okay. Also, again, the most important thing to remember is you cannot cut more material than possible. So on the planer, like I've said before, only one rotation each pass. 
and then for the drum sander, a quarter turn for each pass. Thanks for watching, guys. If you can, please subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want to check out some of my how-to videos or some of the other safety videos, you can check those out on my channel. I'll be pretty much doing a safety video on how to use every tool in our shop that we have. So, again, thanks for checking it out. If you're one of my students, you had to watch it, but thanks for watching until the end. And uh, have a great day, and good luck with your woodworking.